Humans never conceal their desire to control the heavens. So why would I? Hey guys, it's me, UD Gamer here, and today I'll be sharing 5 tips for new players to consider as we get hyped for Honkai Star Rail's official launch, from the perspective of a Genshin player. Of course, some things mentioned in this video might become less relevant as we get more official content. But I do believe the logic behind these tips will help you guys avoid several key pitfalls and traps that most new turn-based RPG players might not be aware of. I'll also be referencing other games in the genre, and let me know in the comments if you spot any that you play. We don't waste time here on this channel, and let's jump right in with number 1. In most turn-based RPGs, speed generally decides who goes first and how often. And if we notice this official image here, Honkai Star Rail doesn't seem too different. The girl in dark blue hair moves first, then after 5 other units, she acts again, even though that there are 7 units on the field. The second unit with the green energy bar, let's call her the green girl, doesn't appear to have an active debuff and only moves after the blue hair girl's second turn. This is called lapping and generally happens when a much slower character is played with a speed focused character. This means that the blue hat girl can dish out 2 attacks before or when the green girl only hits once. If we can farm speed items, a focus on speed gear will be quite important especially on characters you plan to open the battle with. These characters tend to be either very high damage one shot units or units that debuff enemies or buff your teammates. If you can't farm speed gear, then we need to analyse the innate speed stats of characters and their kits when determining character value. Compared to a game like Genshin which does not punish a non-crit hit, turn-based RPGs generally see characters only acting a couple of times per battle, and probably a big game-changing ultimate will only happen once or twice. In a high-stakes game, either a boss battle or PvP, consistency becomes key and a non-crit hit could lose you the game. In this case, crit rates will tend to move towards 100%, especially if there's some sort of cap to the amount of crit damage a character can do. Accuracy and evasion are two other possible mechanics that can be in the game, which are also other ways that consistency matter too. And we all know that 99% accuracy will always fail at the most crucial moment. Unlike Genshin, turn-based games generally do involve their healers and tanks much more since protecting a damage dealer or taunting opponents and soaking damage is quite crucial to win longer fights. March 7 seems to be a debuffer that can freeze enemies, which sounds good in theory but we'll expect most higher tier enemy monsters to have some sort of resistance to freeze or immunity to ice. But overall, stacking debuffs and buffs is a pretty legit strategy and might be something a Genshin player might not be actively thinking about as a form of combat strategy. One thing I want to highlight is that a turn-based system generally has a much higher amount of power creep compared to a 3D open world one like Genshin. A turn-based system, for example, removes the complexity of space, rendering suction crop controls like Venti Spurs rather irrelevant. This lesser complexity results in a quickened pace of power creep, which fans of the Fire Emblem heroes might be familiar with. Of course, it could be delayed with other factors, like rotating meta elements or buffing and nerfing characters. But either way, less permutations to work with means certain characters are more likely to fade into the distance, and a more dynamic buff and nerf system could feel a bit unpleasant to most Genshin players who are used to the lack of kit changes after banner launches. I do think a turn-based game needs PvP, and I would like to see this in Star Rail. There's only so much content you can create with a PvE game and it's easier to have player-led content take the charge in turn-based games. The simpler structure of coding a live-action PvP between two players is also much more possible in turn-based rather than a 3D world like Genshin, which as we can see from Wintrace has to account for lag and network delays. In PvP, the previous points mentioned become far more apparent and any inefficiencies likely will result in players falling behind the average. Resource is key in gacha games, and the best way to get ahead is to not waste resources. My personal opinion is to stick with the free units at first, and make a bet on which of the free units will remain the most relevant out of them. Try to clear as much PvE content as you can, and save the premium currencies. Once the general public has settled on some sort of meta, then you can invest the premium currencies on gacha. Or you could also stay tuned for my further analysis, which will come pretty timely as well, to help us make a decision on which free unit to invest in, or perhaps even analysis on the gacha characters that will be coming. That's it for my first Star Rail video, 
and I'll definitely be keeping a close eye out on this game and its updates in the future. Until then, cheers and see you next time.